We were redeveloping the archaeology gallery at the Willis Museum and at the time the tusk was in the back of one of the cases um, but it was actually uh, resting sort of upright against the back of the case. We brought it back to, to Chilcombe to our headquarters here um, and it was the first chance we'd had to have a real proper look at it um, probably in about well I don't know 20 years possibly since they've done that archaeology gallery. We could see as soon as it was, was back here and in good light um, that there were quite a lot of problems and what had happened was that since it had had the past restoration the cracks had opened up and you could see that the, the old material they'd used to fill the cracks had pulled away from the edges of, of the crack um, and not only that because they used um, a very very hard material to fill the gaps almost like a resin it had actually was stronger than, than the tusk itself and had actually pulled away splinters of the material from the side so you had those sorts of problems where the fill was, was failing, it wasn't doing its job anymore, it didn't look good and it wasn't um, providing any support and it wasn't preventing dust and dirt from getting into the cracks. So that was one of the problems. And the other problem was that they had um, coated the entire thing in a sort of quite a thick, um, probably some kind of acrylic adhesive or something. And um, what that was actually doing was, again, it. it it was sort of stronger and thicker than the very upper surface, uh, the patinated upper surface of the tusk. And um, what was happening was that, it, that the um, adhesive was sort of bubbling and buckling and shrinking as it aged, and it was ripping off the upper surface of the, the patina um, of the tusk, which instead of staying where it was, was just lifting off. So you had these areas um, of sort of raised adhesive with the surface of the tusk stuck underneath and bare patches um, mm. on the actual tusk itself which was sort of quite a bright ivory colour. Um, and that was quite difficult because obviously that coating had to come off because it was causing damage um, and because it didn't look very good but we did lose um, a few sort of areas of the surface because they simply couldn't be relocated back on the surface of the tusk, they were sort of crumbled and stuck to the adhesive. Um, we did put back as many sort of larger pieces as we could. Um, again, only where we could tell where they'd come from, because that's one of our other things, is that we're never allowed to put something back unless we know where it's come from, because that's not, not really ethical. So, um, yes, the coating came off, much as with this little bone. So this is, this is a mower bone, which is a very, very large bird, which is now extinct. Um, and it has come into the collections um, and it's now stored here with a, our Keeper of Natural Sciences. It's quite a good uh, object to explain um, the one of the techniques that I used when I was working on the mammoth tusk at the Willis um, because although it's on a much, much smaller scale, it does actually have um, some of the same problems that I encountered with the, uh, with the mammoth tusk. This bit here which is lifted. I mean, there are cracks all over, but these cracks are actually all quite stable and they're not going anywhere, but that bit is particularly vulnerable to damage or to any sort of pressure on the outside. So we're just going to make a little cushion to sit underneath there. This is the tissue that we use. It's called Gampi tissue. It's Japanese paper um, and it's non-acidic. It's used quite a lot in uh, natural science conservation for all kinds of things. And uh, we're going to essentially make a, a sort of a very small amount of paper mache and feed it in underneath the glue that we use. It looks like a PVA, but it's actually a conservation grade, quite sort of low tack adhesive. So um, when I make the paper mache and I put it in, it will be easy to take out afterwards if somebody wants to. I'm going to go for a little bit to begin with. Essentially just, um, just get it quite tacky. And then that little bit will bunch up quite well, make like a little wadge, which we should be able to start feeding in under there. I'm just going to pop it there to begin with. I might need to use different tools. So as you're putting it in, it's just shaping itself.
And then once they were packed, we had to try and make, find a way of making it look um, aesthetically okay as well. Because obviously you don't really want it to be left with a sort of a white, very obvious cushion there. Um, so what, what actually happened with the mammoth tusk was once this stage had been done, the very, very sort of top part um, of the fill was just done with a little bit of the same um, adhesive that we're using here with a tiny bit of paint mixed in um, and it sort of came out, I mean I've got, this was the, this was the uh, actual colour we used for Mammoth Tusk and this is just a sort of a demonstration example and you can see on the back the, the paper mache fill which has taken on the shape, in this case it's taken on the shape of the plastic cup but it was uh, down into the crack and then the very top layer made with just the paint and the adhesive um, which is also quite flexible and tacky without being too strong. So uh, with this much, much smaller um, example, I probably won't actually need to do a, a whole top layer of fill. It will probably be enough just to um, touch it in with a little bit of paint. I wouldn't paint the object because um, we would never sort of cover up any of the original object. But I would paint uh, where I put the fill. Um, just so that when people look at it, they don't their eye isn't drawn to that area of repair. Everything conservators try and do, apart from that we've got sort of basic rules. One of them is that it has to be reversible, um, and another one is that what we're doing is sort of minimally interventive, and we don't want to sort of disguise damage. Um, but what happened here was the original restoration had this big plaster chunk on the end of the tusk. Um, which was misleading because actually from sort of quite far back it did look like it was part of the original tusk. It was a little bit like the interior of this bone here. It was quite vulnerable, lots of sort of voids. Also we don't really want dust and dirt and things getting in there. So rather than actually create a new sort of, as if I was going to create the other end of this bone, but rather than create a new end to the tusk, we wanted to fill the void make it stable, not make it look like we were trying to, to put the end back on the tusk again. So we used the same technique um, that I've just used on the back of this one here, just to fill in sort of some of the greater voids. That, that process filling probably took about five weeks as well, so that all in all the whole project took about ten weeks. Um, and then when it was finished, the decision was taken that it really didn't need a new coating, and it had such a lovely surface and really a coating wasn't actually going to, to benefit the object, it wasn't going to make it look better, it wasn't going to really protect it from anything because it's going in a closed case. Um, so better really just, just to leave it off.